Hi, I'm Brian from Simply Brian Enterprises and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the homework solution for Top Tech Boys Raspberry Pi Pico class, lesson number three. In this lesson, we are instructed to build a four bit counter and walk through bit by bit uh, counting in binary from zero to 15. As usual, for those of you who are new to my channel, you'll know that I generally like to look at the hardware, run the program, and then review the code afterwards. And that's what we're going to do today. So let's take a look at the hardware setup. Now, first thing you'll notice is that there's five LEDs. Uh, this is because I decided to pick the green LED for this project and realized that there were five of them in the bag. So I thought, well, if SunFounder wants me to have five LEDs, I'd better use five LEDs. So in my homework, I'm actually counting a five bit counter up to 31 rather than a four bit counter to uh, 15. And the hardware setup is pretty simple. You'll see I've got it. Um, the cathodes are jumpered to the ground rail using these short jumpers. And then I've got a 220 ohm resistor on the anode that's going to the GPIO pins on the Pico. And using my little card here, you can't quite read this, but I'm starting with uh, GP11 and working up to 15 makes it a little bit easier knowing that bit one is on pin 11, bit five is on 15. And also instead of using the uh, short clean jumpers, I did opt for the loopy jumpers on this one because I wanted to color code them. I've got the resistor colors. So I've got brown on bit one all the way through green on pin five. So let's go ahead and run the program. And we'll see that we start off counting four, five, six. I'm sorry, I'm off by one already. <laughs> 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and you see we're, we're counting rapidly up to 31. And then we're going to pause and start counting backwards. And now we're counting backwards and backwards and 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And we stopped there. I decided instead of doing a loop, I would just run the program once. Uh, gets the point across pretty easily. So let's take a look now at our code. And I want to mention that I've increased the font in Thani pretty tremendously uh, in hopes that you can read it better, but also I can read it better in my preview window. Um, for those of you who don't know, I use OBS to do these recordings and it's a powerful tool, but the preview window is considerably smaller than my monitor. So I struggle to read the code view um, I have the actual code up on my uh, left hand monitor, but the preview window is straight ahead and I'd rather look straight ahead at you guys. So anyway, there's a piece of information you didn't know, but now you do. All right, I'm going to move the mouse out of the way here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import pin from machine. And as I have in the Pi class, I'm going to rename that. Um, last week I used Kitty Litterbox just for fun. But one thing I wanted to do in the Pi class is import this as Pi pins. And now I'm doing it as Pico pins. And the reason is uh, in the Pi class, we use GPIO. In Pico, we use pin. Um, we get used to these terms and kind of like associate some magic to them. Like there's something magical about the word GPIO or the word pin. And that's not the case at all. These are just placeholders, basically. Um, there's really nothing special about them. So I like to use, and again, in my Pi class, I like to use Pi pins. In this class, I like to use Pico pins. And then I'm importing sleep from time. And then I'm going to start setting up my output. So as I mentioned, I'm using GP11 through 15 just for consistency. Um, as we get into more and more advanced coding, there's some neat things we can do when initializing multiple GPIO pins. We can put them in lists and do a for loop. Uh, and and assign and clear them very quickly. But we're doing things a little slower because this is a beginner course, at least at this point, we're all still beginners. So um, I'm taking the long way around. And then I'm gonna set up two delay timers. Um, you notice there's a delay in the counting from you know bit one, two, three, and then there's a delay when we're done counting up before we count down. So I wanted to use two di different delay counters. By using a variable, this allowed me to kind of adjust the code. I wanted to get through the code quickly for the video, but I didn't want to get through too quickly. I wanted to be able to see the numbers as it was counting. Um, so I found that uh, a value of about 0.4 or 400 milliseconds is, is pretty good for the counting bits. 
And then the very first thing we want to do is we want to clear the LED status. If I was testing the code and maybe I had stopped it mid count and there was some value displayed, this will clear that out. And then I'm going to start uh, actually counting the numbers. And for this, I'm going to use a for loop, which I know we haven't covered in class. And I'm going to use this function called range. And the Python range function, it's always important to know that it counts from our first number to the last number minus one. So here it says from zero to 32, it's not actually gonna count 32, it's gonna count to 31, which in binary is exactly what we want. So I've set the range from zero to 32, and there's an optional parameter at the end, which is the step counter, and I've set it to step one. And you'll see why I've actually forced that. Even though I could have omitted it, there's a reason I put it on there, and you'll see that as we walk through the code. Um, I'm taking this, so I'm, I'm using the counter bin val as my or binary value um, as my loop, but I'm going to want to manipulate this as I walk through the loop. So I want to copy this off to something I can manipulate. If I start manipulating this value, I could really throw off the counter and it would actually lose count and, and display all kinds of random weird numbers. I don't want to do that. So we're going to actually create a my bin val equals val, uh, bin val. This is just because now this variable, uh, this variable my bin val is what I'm actually going to base all of my math off of. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear the LEDs. So regardless of what number was displayed last time through the loop, we're going to clear it out and we're going to write some new values. So there's a few different ways we can do this. And I thought that um, the simplest way in my mind is just to walk the value backwards and say, are we using this bit? So let's say that uh, my bin val this time through the loop is five. So is five greater than or equal to 16? Nope, we continue on. Is it greater than or equal to eight? No, we continue on. Is it greater than or equal to four? Oh yes, we need to do something. So let's try instead of five, let's use 17 and we'll kind of see how we walk through this. So my first, my value is 17 greater than 16, yes. So I'm going to light the fifth bit and then I'm going to decrement the number by 16. What that is, is basically saying, we looked at the first bit, yes, we're going to use it. So I'm going to take that 17 and I'm going to subtract the value of that bit. I'm going to subtract 16 off. So my value is now one as I walk through the code. So the fifth bit, the 16 bit is lit. And now we're going to walk through the code. Is one greater than eight? No. Is one greater than four? No. Is one greater than two? No. Is one greater than or equal to one? Yes, it is. Okay. So now we have to light the one bit and we're going to decrement by one as well. Now we don't have to decrement here. This is actually an error on my part because we're done with the bit, but um, just to be, just to be consistent and lazy when I copied and pasted these through these if statements through um, we're decrementing the one. So it's always going to be zero by the time we get to the bottom. And then we use that bit delay of 400 milliseconds. Right now I have it set to 400 milliseconds to sleep. And then we're going to go right back through the code. So we're going to go, um, if we start with a value of one, we get all the way down here. We light the one LED, uh, sleep, loop back up, reset all the LEDs, and we walk down two, 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 two. We light the second bit. Now the value is zero, so we don't light the one bit. And then we delay, and then we just keep going through until we hit 31. Then once we hit 31, we're going to go for that delay after we count it upwards. So you saw they stopped after all five bits were lit. We counted to 31. And now we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to walk from 31 down to zero. So in my range, I'm going to start with 31. Um, again, I have to do uh, a minus one. So I'm going to walk to negative one, which is going to give me 31 through zero. And this is where that step value comes in handy. You see, I can set the step to negative one. So I can set this value to whatever size step I want, and I can go negative. So if I want to count backwards from 31 to zero, all I have to do is set my step value to negative one. And now as we walk through this code, it is exactly the same thing. We're copying it off again so we can manipulate the value, clearing the status, and then we're just checking the number once again. Um, is it 16? Is it eight? Is it four? Is it two? Is it one? Um, outputting the correct um, value, 
going again for this delay of 400 milliseconds, go back up to the top and, and back through. So now we count down from 31 to zero and then the program ends. So there's a lot of different ways we can count in binary, but that's the way I've used before and I kind of like that method. So I've kept using it here. If you're new to my channel, be sure to hit subscribe. I really appreciate that. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up for a like. And I appreciate your time for Simply Brian Enterprises. This is Brian, and I will see you in the next video.